Hello everyone, it's me, Demetra Kay of the Demetra Kay Show here on YouTube and a proud contributor of the African Diaspora News Channel. If you can do me a favor before we get started and like this video and subscribe to both channels if you haven't already. All right, and so just the other day, we learned that uh, Congressman James Clyburn of South Carolina wants to do something great for the country. He wants to unite the country by making the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, the national hymn, okay? Not to be confused with the national anthem, you know, we in the United States already have that, and that's the Star Spangled Banner. You guys know it's caused a lot of contention over the last couple of years uh, due to Cal Colin Kaepernick taking a knee and all of that, right? And so James Clyburn is saying, uh, due to all of the things that's gone on in the country, basically it'd be nice to have a song to, you, you know, unite the country, um, and get rid of some of the racial disparities and things like that. And it's not just a black song. It can be for white people too. Now you guys should know that the song was written in 1899 by James Weldon Johnson. He was a leader of the NAACP and the song was written uh, for school children to sing in homage to uh, Abraham Lincoln's birthday celebration in 1900. Okay, whatever, right? That's already a problem in and of itself. But here we are in 2021, James Clyburn wants to use that song. And you know, a lot of people feel like, black people especially feel like that's our song. I wanna keep it real with you guys. I only know the first couple of words, lift every voice and sing. That, I, I, just being honest with you, I don't really know um, the, the, the lyrics, okay? Maybe I should learn them, I don't know, but I don't know them. And so he wants everybody else to uh, to sing it. And I, I don't know where the song will be sung, but he's drawing up a measure, I guess, to take it to the house, uh, to make it the, the national hymn, you know, like a hymn you sing in church. And so anyway, so also a little bit more about James Clyburn. Again, you guys know he's the congressman from South Carolina. He's been that since 1993. And he's just a... Like, I know we, we can't say certain words on YouTube because we get in trouble, so I won't say those things. But let's say that he has a mean, soft shoe dance, if you catch my drift, okay? He's one of those Negroes that, you know, he it, his, his mastery is in soft shoeing, if you will. Now, you guys also know that he is not for reparations. Now, why do I bring that up? I bring that up because this whole song, let's make lift every voice and sing the black national anthem, the national hymn of the country to unite black and white people is nothing but symbolism. It's symbolism for black people so we can feel good. Oh gosh, we're gonna join hands with white people and sing our song. And we're gonna, you know, this is gonna really bridge the gap and make us all feel better. It's not going to do that. It's symbolism just like us continuing to vote for Democrats, the party of the people, the party of black people, the, just like making that song, the national hymn and, 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 and Joe Biden, they're not going to do anything in the Democrats or whoever, Republicans either for that matter, they're not going to do anything for black people. It's all symbolism to make us feel good. And so I brought up reparations is because, you know, James Clyburn seems to talk about everything else, but reparations. Now we should also know that James Clyburn is against reparations. He's like, I don't think it should come in the form of money. I think it should be reinvested into different neighborhoods because he has this initiative where the money will go to certain neighborhoods. Now, it should also be said that James Clyburn, his dis um, South Carolina, the district that he's in, he has um, eight counties that are among the worst the poorest rather in the nation. Eight of the counties in his district are among the poorest counties in the nation. And so, you know, I, really James, really? You don't think your people, black people, well, maybe he doesn't see himself as black, I don't know. But you don't think your people uh, could benefit from having uh, reparations? Then he also says, well, it's hard to tell you know, who should actually get the money because, you know, you have some people who are mixed with white and some people who are um, black, but they look white. And I swear I'm not making this up. This is what I read. There's some people who look um, white, but they're really black and they've been passing. So basically I don't think they should get it. So there's just, there's just really no way of telling who is um, eligible for this money. But 
We should also know that, and, and there's a lot of elements to this, and James Clyburn is the reason that Joe Biden is going to the White House, him and Kamala. Joe Biden went to James in South Carolina and said, hey, you know what? I got some premium butter biscuits for you. I sprinkled some little extra, you know, magical powder on there. And he just like makes your mouth water. And, you know, I need you to help me out. And that's what James Clyburn did. He talked to the people in South Carolina. He, you know, rallied up the black people and said, hey, we need to vote for Jim Crow Joe and get him into the White House. And, you know... It, it was successful because we know Joe Biden was dead in the water, not him personally, but his campaign was dead in the water uh, before he went to South Carolina. And so it's the um, old Negroes, if you will, like James Clyburn, who continues to speak for black people, but is not actually for black people at all. You know, and then he said something. I want to get this quote right. What did he say? Because uh, I, I wrote it down. He says, reparations... It's not just about black people, but it's also about black people. What does that even mean? It's not just for black people, but it's also about black people. I mean, because with his initiative that he had, people were saying, well, per your plan, it wouldn't just help black people. It would help white people and mostly white people because in certain districts, I think it was like 60% white people and 20% black people. And so his plan wouldn't just help black people because it was supposed to help poor people. It would mostly help white people. And so that's what he came up with his quote that is not just about black people. It's also about black people. <laughs> oh, But you know what's funny to me? is that this dude keeps getting into office, been there almost 30 years, and he has done nothing for black people, nothing at all. He's against reparations. He wants to offer up this song, lift every voice and sing as a way to bridge the racial divide. I wish I could make this stuff up because if I, if I could, I'd be rich. You know, and I just, it would just be like great fiction, but it's not. This is real life stuff. Um, that James Clyburn is doing to black people. He is the the, the top ranking black uh, congressperson there. And so, you know, people listen to him. They listen to him and they uh, feel like he is the voice of black people. And he's not, he has not delivered anything for black people. And so if you live in South Carolina and you have an opportunity to vote the next time he um, gets, tries to be reelected, if you will, please do not vote for this man. Don't vote for him. And whatever you do, whatever you do, please don't fall for this nonsense that the, the black national anthem should be the national hymn to, he, uh, to heal the racial divide. That is not on black people to heal the racial divide because we didn't cause the racial divide. But again, they use old Negroes like that to, you know, speak for the rest of us and make us think, well, there's something we can do as black people now. It's, you know, it's our job to make sure these white people like us and they accept us. And well, if, if, let me tell y'all something. Okay. I don't know if y'all know, but I, I don't think white people going to be really receptive to uh, the national hymn of lift every voice and sing. You know, they didn't like uh, Colin Kaepernick kneeling to their national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. So you think that, I mean, and, and I don't watch football, but I heard. That, you know, a lot of white people, white supremacists were boycotting the first week of, of uh, football because they were playing that through all the games. You guys know Alicia Keys saying the national anthem, or not the national anthem, but the, the black national anthem. And a lot of white people were upset. So can you imagine James Clyburn needs to stop, just, just push away from the butter biscuits just a little bit. So he can come down to reality. So anyway, you guys, for more insightful commentary, please subscribe to this channel and my channel, Demetra K, on YouTube. Peace.